Hello everybody and welcome to another video. So some of you guys may have seen the video I posted a couple of days ago which is basically a guide to getting the most out of your defensive CP and in request many of you have now asked for the offensive CP which is the blue. Now if this gets great feedback I'll probably do the green as well just to help you out there for the final section. Uh, but this video is really going to be about how to sort of perfect your blue CP based on your build. Now a disclaimer with blue CP, obviously some people will play magic and some people will play stamina. I'm not going to be able to cover both of those completely necessarily, I will do my best to. But just kind of remember that both the magic base CP and the stamina base CP reflect each other pretty well. So generally speaking, one is going to affect the other, just it's going to be stamina. So essentially what I'm saying is if you've got 50 points in the magic version, but instead you are stamina, well, you're probably going to put 50 points in the stamina, etc. You get the general gist. Uh, but this video is going to be about sort of perfecting that stuff and how you're going to get the best out of your healing, your damage, your crits, etc, etc, etc. Now, the blue CP is a bit more min-maxable, I want to say, than the red CP. And that although you can reduce your damage with the red CP against various targets, it's never really going to be generic against everybody. Now, the blue CP is a bit different in that most of the time, whatever you change in the blue CP is always going to be the case against any target. So no matter how you arrange it, it is always going to be the best. For that reason, there is one simple way to make sure that it's the best, and that is to test it, essentially. What I'm going to do is give you what I know is a min-maxed CP for my DK setup and allow you to look at that and then explain why I've done certain things and explain how you can test changes for different builds. So let's do that. So let's jump into CP, jump in the blue. Now what I did in the red one, which I'll do again, is I'll basically respec CP trees as required and discuss different areas of the tree. So we're going to start off with the slightly weirder trees. Um, I'm going to skip the ones that I deem absolutely useless and then I'm going to go on to the, the key trees which is basically going to be damage, crit damage, penetration. So the weirder trees are going to include your blessed which is your healing done, uh, shattering blows which is damage on shields, both physical and staff expert and thaumaturge. These are all slightly different to precise strikes, piercing, mighty, master arms, elemental expert, elfborn and spell erosion because those are all very very obvious damage. Every single tree in here is relatively useful. The light and heavy attack CP, which are here, are very limited. So let's start off with those. So these basically increase your damage done with light and heavy attacks. Now, almost never are these going to be worth it. There are exceptions. If you're running a build with heavy attacks, these are really, really useful just to add that little bit. Now, you're never going to stack them too high because in the end, increasing your physical damage, etc., or magic damage, etc., will do the same job. But sometimes points are worth putting into these if that is the case. Next patch is a completely different story because even with the nerf next patch, light attacks are probably going to be fairly relevant. And let me quickly show you the scaling on those. So as before, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take them all out of one tree to show you this and give you an example. So... For anybody, again, who has not seen the previous video, I suggest watching that. But essentially, CP always round down. So where we see here 1.4%, that is 1% extra damage. It is not 1.4%. It will always round down. And that is also true if we hit an exact number, for example, 10.0%, that will round down almost always. There is one exception, which is a high number, uh, but I probably won't bother going on to that, which will also round down. It will not stay on that same percentage. So you want to be looking how to get the best point out of everything. Okay, so light attack. You've got three great scaling points here. The no first one, remember, is number three. Three is going to be true for very, very many builds. Anything that you are using a spam ball, in PvP, it is probably going to be worth you using three points because it's going to add that little bit to your flat damage. It's going to add it to your lights, to your heavies, heavies for sustain, lights for flat damage, and it is going to give you 2% extra damage. That scales so quickly and for such a little explanation that it is well worth putting a few points in. Now, if we're running a build that is based heavily on heavy attack weaving, for example, some stamina Judas setups may consider this, it's more likely to be relevant on builds such as heavy attack DK builds, maybe heavy attack ganks, that sort of stuff. Then we start to look at the value of the CP a bit more. So let's move up the points. Now, as you can see, all of these points so far, six isn't bad, we're getting 4.11, but all of these generally are not that exciting until nine, 6.06. 
That's a reasonable scaling. But since we're building for a gank, I'm gonna stack these points up and show you the two key numbers. 19, which is 12.1%, and then all the way up to 35, which is 20.26%. Those are your good numbers for heavy attack base setups. Outside of those setups, I would never go beyond three in the CP in the current patch. Somerset, that may change. That's the easy ones. Now, Shattering Blow, the final one in this tree, is basically increasing your damage done against shields. It's a bit of a weird one, because in the end, every other tree is also going to, every single one of them, is going to increase your damage done against shields. However, there are a few select builds, especially if you're running a tankier setup, where it can actually be harder to kill a shield stacking build than anything else. And so it can sometimes be worth taking that tiny bit of flat damage to get extra damage against shields on the grounds that let's imagine you're running something that's heavily heal debuffed and you really really struggle because of that you've got all of these debuffs but you can't get through shield because there's no way to debuff that on your build that's where this tree might be relevant and again this one scales very generously not quite as generously as the previous but you're looking at numbers such as 13 keep going up to 20 and then going onwards we can go there it is up to 28. I'd never go past 28. Those are your key numbers here. And that is only relevant for builds where you are stacking to attack shields, basically. Um, so you're already confident killing any other build because you've got a lot of debuffs and that sort of thing. Or you're running something that's heavily like heal attacking. That's your way to get there. The final tree is Bless. Now, obviously, this is only going to be relevant to builds that either need healing or have heavy healing. That is not every build. Any shielding build, I never touch this. Magicka Nightblade, if you're running a Destro Resto, I've put a few in here, and I'll show you the scaling on that in a sec. Uh, I believe it's nine, don't quote me here. It is not nine, it is, you'll get there. There it is, seven. So seven will give you that 2%. Um, I wouldn't go much further than that on any sort of Destro Resto setup for Magicka Nightblade. Outside of that, I think you're really looking at builds such as Stamina, if increasing your flat damage is already not doing that enough. But most specifically, magic classes that have a class heal. So Warden, DK, Templar. Those are your big dogs here. Now, obviously, again, stamina will be relevant, but I don't have the experience to really tell you how much you should put there from a stamina perspective. I'll leave that up to you. It's probably going to be fairly similar to stamina uh, magicka, as I said. So we're going to move up here and show you the scaling. Now, go up to 18 points. 19 <coughs> puts us at 5.2%. It takes three points and four points to get to 23, but it also takes, where is it? Here we go. So 23 here is going to be 6.17. 19 is going to be 5.2. 15 is going to be four. So every single four point jump is giving us another 1%. In that case, it is also worth going another four to 27. So 27 is going to give us that 7% mark. That is the most healing we get with the four point scaling. If you feel you need to commit to going past seven, then you should be going all the way up to 27. That's your next worthwhile point. Now, I am a person who believes that defense is important to make short. What I mean by that is when you're on the defense, don't get stuck on it. So I actually go a little further on many of my builds where heals are revolt, and I go for five point jumps, which is one, two, three, four, five, 32, and one, two, three, four, five to 37. As you can see, if I then go five points to 42, I would have to invest six, and I don't believe that's worth it. So 37 is gonna be your sweet spot for heavier healing builds, 27 where healing's generally all right, so things like Magic Templar, and then seven for any class such as Magic Nightblade, Destro, Resto, maybe Stamina, I'm not 100% on Stamina. Okay, so that's the weirded trees. I'll quickly shove those back in Master Arms, and then we'll move on to Ah, one more, Falmaturge. So Falmaturge is a really different one. Now, this is only gonna be applicable to builds where dots are essential. Every build has dots. Every single build I have ever seen has dots because there's always something that counters it. The question is, how important are those builds, uh, those dots to your kills? This Magic DK, being a Magic DK, you would expect to put some in dots. It is not worth it because the dot is not what's getting my kill. My kill is coming from my heal debuff from my banner and the flat direct damage. I'm only running one dot in this setup and so it's not worth the points. In other setups I've run, you would have seen me run sort of Flame Breath, Burning Embers, uh, perhaps Talent as well. I'm running a lot at that point, and so it starts to be worth points. So before you even invest points here, you need to look in the mirror and say, do I need these points? Is it key to get my kill? Great examples here, Stamina DK dot setups with healing buffs, 
brilliant example, you're probably gonna want them there. Bleed builds, you're probably gonna want them there, etc. It's not always key to a build. There's a lot of builds I wouldn't run this. That being said, on any build where bots dots are gonna help control, the scaling in this tree once again is very good. So 13 is gonna be your key number here. 13 is a great number to invest points in this tree if you are gonna run a setup that has a dot that really helps your damage but isn't essential because it scales very, very generously. It's only three point jumps, but after that it goes one, two, three to 7.4, which is a bit of a waste. One, two to 18, which is a bit of a waste, etc. all the way up to 20 points here. Now 20 actually is gonna scale up slightly better than the 13 investment, but it is starting to get in the region where you're over investing points. So this is one of those trees where things are a little bit different and you have to really look at your build specifically. Generally, I would advise that it was 13, 20, 28. Those are gonna be your key numbers to remember. But of course, if you're running a dot heavy build, you can start to look to invest points such as 40, which is gonna be the max I would ever invest in this tree. So let's take this out and let's move on to the more serious CP. So let's move on, like I said, to these heavier CP. So that's gonna be your direct damage, which is master of arms, your penetration, which is spell erosion or for physical piercing, and then your flat damage, which is gonna be mighty, or over here, Elemental Expert, and your crit damage and heals, do remember that, which is Elfborn and Precise Strikes. Now, this is gonna vary heavily on your build. All I'm gonna be able to do is give you a rough guide as to how best set this up. Now, what I'm gonna do again is I'm gonna take the points out of this tree here, and we're gonna work from the rest and explain certain things. So first things first, is your build overtime damage based or burst based? As soon as your build is burst base, you can skip everything you will ever need to know and go all the way up to at least 40 points in Master of Arms. Even on a Magpla, where your direct damage is actually classified as a dot, so jabs, it is still gonna be worth putting points here in a heartbeat because your ultimate is probably gonna be counted as this your power of the light, generally most burst damage is gonna fit under Master Arms. 40 is the first heavier scaling point and that's where we wanna look at to start with because that's gonna scale three points up from 37, et cetera, et cetera. I've explained that stuff a few times so it should be fine to understand. Now, excluding those builds, so excluding a build where dots is your base damage, we can go way further than that yet because we can go in four point jumps now. 44, 48, 52, and of course, 56. 56 is gonna be an extra key number. 56 points invested Master Arms is gonna be true for almost every burst build. Nine times out of 10, if you are running a direct damage burst, which is probably 99 out of 100 builds, it's gonna be 56 points that go in there. So if you don't have a clue what I'm saying in this build, put 56 in there and you're probably gonna be good to go. That being said, there are those occasions where investing more points is. And just to be the bearer of bad news, my Majesty K build turret is one of those. So this is a build where your damage is slightly lower than you may like. And so we're gonna make a sacrifice in terms of our dot pressure where it could be worth points to instead stack into Master Arms at the five point scaling for that little bit more direct where we need that burst. So we're gonna go up by five and we're gonna go up by five and that's gonna give you 66 points and that is why I have 66 points in Master Arms. Burst is needed and Burst is my kill and I'm also a tiny bit short of the burst I'd need against better targets. This gets me that number and so is why the build works. Now moving over to these trees I'm afraid to say that penetration is where it gets really annoying so I'm going to come back to that last. We're going to go into Elfborn and Elemental Expert. Elfborn two numbers to remember this is very easy what I'll do is I'll take up the pen points now. Elfborn, you are either going to be going for 40 in a low crit build, or you are going to go for all the way up to 56 in a high crit build. There is no build, apart from my Overload Gang perhaps, where I would ever run more or less than that. It's always what I would run. And the reason for that is because it increases your crit healing done, even though you might be in a lower crit build, so this one is only like 32% chance, it is still worth the investment on the grounds that it is affecting heals and damage. But more importantly, in a PvP perspective, crits, that's generally where most kills against skilled players will come from, a good stack of crits. If those crits land at the right moment, lo and behold, you have a kill, and so 56 points is gonna be the sweet spot. 
Would I ever invest more? Extremely rarely. Would I ever invest re less? Extremely rarely. Now that's the easy bit. Unfortunately, Elemental Expert and Spell Erosion gets a little friskier. So this, I'm afraid to say, is gonna be pure testing. I'll make it a little easier for you and show you the scaling numbers. But in the end, the only way to know this is pick any target, it does not matter who they are, and test your damage against them. If you do more damage with more pen rather than Elemental Expert, keep their pen and vice versa. Just note that if the difference is very marginal, neither penetration nor crit will be impacting on shielding builds. And again, we get that argument of, am I fighting a shielded build? If so, how do I make this relevant against that? So just remember that if shields are going to be a problem, you may want to stack a bit more into the sort of direct and sh uh, shattering rather than the penetration. But that's obviously very situational. Most times you're just going to go for your best damage output. So let's go down to the scaling points. We'll take out the elemental expert real fast and move these up. Again, this is gonna scale the same as healing. So instantly, you can skip all the way up to 27 because there's no way you're gonna run less than that. I think if you're running 27, well, frankly, nine times out of 10, you're gonna run 37. And this will be the lowest I would generally use there. 37 is gonna give you that 9%, very nice rounding there. And it's gonna give you that damage on your magic damage stuff. That's gonna include direct damage, and it's gonna include dots. That's why this tree is worth investing in, is because it's not just affecting one thing, it affects every target. So although it scales harsher, it's giving us damage that will affect our crits because it's higher flat damage. It gives us damage that is direct. It gives us damage that is dots. You get the gist, it is an all round tree and that's why it's great. At that point, you wanna shove a decent chunk of your points into spell erosion, and then it is gonna be a damage comparison. For me personally, my min-max will be 49 Elemental Expert, 48 Spell Erosion. That is the best possible output you can get from this build against any target all round. I've tested that on targets, basically any less into Penetration and more into Elemental Expert is less damage, and vice versa, if I drop to the next scaling point in Elemental Expert, which would be 43 for another six point investment, doesn't make sense, or 37, which does make sense because that's five point investment, it's still less damage overall even with those in pen. It would also be true that you may at that point want to start adding points or taking points from Master at Arms just to get that full comparison. I understand that's expensive. So generally, you're either going to be looking at the numbers if you're poorer, 37, 49, and then the rest go into Spell Erosion. If you are running 56 in crit almost every single time, minus very few, you're probably looking at going for 37, an Elemental Expert, and the rest in pen, especially if you're running Healing CP. If you're not running healing CP, you're going to want to stack 56, 49, flat, um, and 56, and then look at what's left and adjust that round. Dots, shattering, master arms, etc. Now, this is most likely true for physical. Again, I am not a stamina expert. It doesn't do doesn't float my boat at all. But if you are a stamina player, I would imagine you could probably reflect this pretty similarly. The only final thing to mention here are there are a few good passives. So exploiter. This is pretty good as a wealth, and you're gonna have stamina for that, so you're gonna get there. Uh, but the reality is, if your stamina are missing that, you're probably not gonna get there. And I don't believe it is ever worth investing for for Magicka, because I think there's too many points gone in terms of that. Uh, weapon crit, so this is perfect strike, and the same equivalent for this, which is over here, spell precision, you're always gonna get this in your build. The only example you might not is wealth. You're gonna wanna invest at least 30 points in blessed, hence 37, on a wealth to unlock that passive for your crit to help your heals. Foresight, it's not that relevant. Arcane Well, not that relevant. Vengeance, not that relevant. Same is going to be true for Stamina, where apart from that off-balance, it's not particularly exciting. What is really going to be interesting is Butcher and Tactician, which are both going to flip this CP completely on its ass. So sometimes, if you need a way to reliably proc off-balance, it may be worth finding the balance between, for instance, Staff Expert, Master Arm Shattering, or Physical, Master Arm Shattering, to reach that 120 passive off balance. There are some builds that benefit from that, such as Truth, uh, Magic DK can sometimes, but I really don't think it's the, worth the investment there. And then Butcher is also really gonna be good on builds where light attacks are very relevant. Key example here, again, it's gonna be Wealth because that is huge light attacks. I think that covers everything, Key. Uh, final thing to mention, Repost is a great passive, but again, you're never gonna miss it. And this one is... I don't even remember this one. This one is also not that bad, uh, but not that important. So yeah, I think that covers everything. Again, if this was useful, if you want the green tree, drop a like, tell me in the comments, hit the subscribe button, and I will get that up for you. 
But for the time being, I hope this was useful. Good luck with your builds, good luck with the min-max, and I'll see you in the next video.